One of the most versatile pieces of tech for 3D printing is Octoprint. It's a little web server that runs on a Raspberry Pi and lets you remote control a 3D printer from your computer. Or so you thought. Because the thing is, Octoprint is so much more than just a way to start and check in on prints remotely. It's turning more and more into a full-on 3D printer operating system. There are plugins now that do everything from AI print watching, over sending status infos over your favorite messengers, to time-lapse tools that let you do this. So today I'm going to walk you through the setup process on a Raspberry Pi, uh, go over the hardware you need, and I'm going to share some of my favorite plugins for Octoprint with you. Just like I'm going to share this video sponsor, Eligu. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be using the Eligu Neptune 2, which is finally starting to have better worldwide availability. But also, Eligu have just announced the Mars 3 LCD resin printer, now with a 4K monochromatic screen, larger build volume, and an included Shit the Box Pro license. And with the Mercury X, Eligu now have a curing and washing station that fits for their large format Saturn printer. So check all this out at the links below. So let's start out with the hardware needed. First of all, you are going to need a Raspberry Pi. I'm using a Pi 4 with 2GB of RAM, and while Octoprint can run on almost any Raspberry Pi ever made, you should stick to a Pi 3 and up for the best experience. Alternatively, you can also run Octoprint on a Windows, Linux, or Mac OS machine that you already have, as long as that's not going to reboot in the middle of your print someday. I'm looking at you, Windows 10. But for a Raspberry Pi, you're also going to need a USB power supply. The recommendation is not to use a charger, but instead something that's actually labeled as a USB power supply. Though from a technical standpoint, there's not really that much of a difference between what they do. And especially after the Pi 4, um, the Pis have also got much better power stages on them. Uh, so they're not that finicky about the power supply you're using anymore. However, in either case, it should be one with ample power, so your one amp charger you got from Apple is not going to work. I've had great experiences with the chargers slash supplies from Anchor, uh, the basic two or three output unit, which I'm using all around the studio, so I can't show you. Uh, those work perfectly, or this power delivery charger, you know, anything that is halfway decent works. Alternatively, if you have a strong 5 volt supply in your printer, you can also hotwire that onto a USB cable. Just make sure to shut down the Pi through Octoprint cleanly before you power off the printer. Speaking of USB cables, you will definitely need a decent one of those as well. Uh, the Pi 4 now uses USB-C, which is great, but many cables you get with gadgets and the likes are still too flimsy to provide stable power to the Pi. So again, I really like the cables from Anchor, um, but if you have, for example, a spare USB power delivery charge cable from your laptop, that should work as well. The Raspberry Pi itself can detect when there are issues with your power supply or cable, um, and Octoprint will in turn show you those warnings when the Pi detects anything. Lastly, to complete the set of parts for basic functionality, you need an SD card. Any card works, but getting one that's at least decently fast is going to speed up load times a lot. I've got a bunch of these Samsung Evo Plus cards uh, for my cameras that work perfectly fine in a Pi as well. But any card that has an A rating for application performance, like A1 or A2, those will work just perfectly as well. I mean, really, get something halfway decent and you're fine. So that's all the hardware that you actually need to get Octoprint running, all linked in the description below. But really, if you're setting up Octoprint, you probably want a webcam feed too. Now, there are two basic options, getting a USB webcam uh, or getting a Raspberry Pi camera module. Either one works. Uh, the Raspberry Pi camera is a fantastic value, but you're going to need to print some sort of a mount and enclosure for it. Uh, on the other hand, USB webcams are all kind of meh for their image quality. They're still good enough to check in on prints, but most importantly, they are a bit more convenient to use. The standard camera, which I don't have at hand right now, would be the 720p 720p Logitech C270. But even most off-brand webcams aren't any worse for image quality and they pretty much all work with no fuss out of the box with Octoprint. But again, if you want something that's proven, get a Raspberry Pi camera or the Logitech C270. And that's it for hardware. Uh, 
Well, you will also need a computer and a card reader for the setup, but we're just gonna assume uh, that you already have those. Now, for the setup, we are actually not going to install OctoPrint directly. We're going to install OctoPi, which is sort of the official Raspberry Pi image that has everything already laid out. It has OctoPrint set up in there, and it's just ready to get going. Now, I'm going to strongly recommend that you use the official OctoPi image. You're going to find modified OctoPrint or OctoPi images from people that say, hey, We've got everything set up for you. It's got all the plugins installed already. But the thing is, if it's just from some random dude you, you found on the internet, you don't know what else is also installed on those images and how well they've been set up. So, you know, you're basically inviting the person making that image into your home network. Best case, everything is fine. Perhaps they run a Bitcoin miner on your Pi while it's idle, but maybe they've got a full on backdoor set up in that image that allows them to snoop around your devices, or perhaps they intentionally burn your printer down one day. You just never know. I trust Tino Hoiske, who makes Octoprint, and by extension also Guy Sheffer, who makes Octopi. And again, I would highly recommend sticking to their official releases. Setting up plugins in normal way isn't that hard anyways. So let's get started with the setup. I'd actually recommend using a pretty new, but super convenient way of setting up Octopi, and that is through the Raspberry Pi imager you can get from raspberrypi.org slash software. Install and run the imager. Under Choose OS, select Other Specific Purpose OS and choose Octopi. This will automatically download the newest version of Octopi for the setup. Then pick your SD card under Choose Storage, but make sure that card has no important files on it because they'll be gone in a second. Now, for our special magic trick, press Ctrl, Shift, and X, and this will bring up the imager's secret Advanced Options menu. Here, enable Enable SSH and pick a modestly secure password for the Pi user. Choosing anything that isn't the default Raspberry password will automatically help protect your Octopi install from malicious actors on the same network. Then, one step down, you can configure your Wi Fi connection. Simply enter your Wi-Fi's name and password and choose the correct country code to prevent connectivity issues later on. Once everything is set up, click Save and then Write. Once that's done, eject the SD card, drop it into your Pi, and we're ready to power everything up. Plug in the USB cable to power up the Pi and watch the ACT LED. That's going to be lit for a while, but once that turns off, Octoprint is going to be ready for use at HTTP octopi.local. If your browser can't find your Octoprint install, check your router's network overview page to find the Pi's IP address or the network page in Windows Explorer. Since this is the first time this Octoprint instance is running, it's going to show you the first run wizard. There's actually not much to say here. Just follow the steps, set up your printer's dimensions, and you're good to go. All that's left to do is to power up your printer and to plug it in through USB. Uh, quick side note here. Uh, some printers have a flaw in their electronics where they will back power the Pi. So if it's plugged into your printer, it will back power the Pi uh, through the USB port the wrong way. And that can cause all sorts of problems from Octoprint crashing to the Pi's Wi Fi just disappearing. Like, not physically disappearing, but disappearing in software. I've put the link to the forum post about that in the description below. And at this point, you are ready to start printing. But wait, there is more. Once you've gotten familiar with Octoprint, surely you'll be finding a couple of spots where you would like to tailor the experience to your personal needs or preferences. And this is where plugins come in. There's a plugin for pretty much everything. But before we go through some of the plugins I'd recommend, here is one quick tip that is going to be super useful. If you use a slicer that supports it, such as Prusa Slicer, you can directly upload your G-code files to an Octoprint install straight from the slicer without ever having to save it to your computer and then having to manually upload it. Go into Octoprint settings, generate an application key, copy that into your slicer, and then tell it where to find your Octoprint setup. Default is the same octopi.local hostname. And voila! You've got a new send G-code button in your slicer that is going to conveniently send off your prints to Octoprint and, if you want to, even automatically start them once they're uploaded. That is a massive convenience feature. Okay, on to plugins. You can install plugins right inside the Octoprint interface. Go into the settings again, click Plugin Manager, and then Get More. You can browse plugins right here, but the Details button is going to take you out of your Octoprint install, so the most convenient way to then install a plugin is to come back to the Plugin Manager on your Octoprint page, 
and just install them from there. So the ones that I find really convenient for daily use are Touch UI, which gives you a basic mobile-friendly interface if you want to quickly check in your prints from your phone. By default, you get the full interface, which works, but you have to zoom around quite a bit and Touch UI makes that a lot more convenient. Next up for printing parts. Octoprint includes a basic G-code viewer, but it's only a single layer view and we can certainly do better than that. Pretty G-code is one of the options for that. It's a full-on 3D G-code viewer that syncs up with your print progress. And while the way it displays extrusion lines isn't volumetrically accurate, it's still super helpful to see what the print you've loaded up is going to look like. But what if the print you've started isn't going as intended? Well, especially if you have more than a single part on the plate of your printer, that's a bit of a messy situation when one of them, for example, comes loose from the bit. If you now stop the print, you can throw out all those parts, but if you keep going, the loose extruded material from the failing part might mess up all the other ones as well. So what the exclude region plugin allows you to do is to tell Octoprint to just not send any more print instructions that are in that area of the failed part. That's super useful and it can save you a lot of time and material should you ever need to use it. So install it before you need it. Next up, of course, one of the coolest features Octoprint enables is getting those magic time lapses of your prints. Instead of your camera just snapping a picture in a fixed interval, the Octolapse plugin can sync that up with the end of a layer and even create those cool nozzle orbiting effects. Octopi is already prepared to run Octolapse without the extra step of installing the Python development package, so you can just click install and you'll be ready to use Octolapse. The setup process will still take a second. One of the useful things that Octolapse lets you do is to override your webcam's exposure, white balance, and focus if you have one with autofocus. So if you just want those settings without full-on installing Octolapse, the camera settings plugin lets you do exactly that for your viewing pleasure. And lastly, what if you want to check in on your printer when you're out on the go? Well, first of all, letting a 3D printer run without supervision and without you being able to physically intervene is always going to be something that comes with some risks and you should only do if you really trust your machine. But say you do, and you do trust your machine, and you want to be able to check in on your machine from anywhere, then the Octo Everywhere plugin is exactly what you need. You can get the full Octoprint interface wherever you are and just check in and make sure things are doing well. And if you have to, you can stop the print or use Exclude Region to stop things from getting worse. Octo Everywhere is a totally free service, but the alternative, the Spaghetti Detective, is something you might want to look into as well. It's got a free tier that allows time-limited use and then paid unlimited plans. But the big feature of the Spaghetti Detective is AI-based print failure detection. I did a whole video on that, uh, and you can check that out up here. So yeah, that should get you pretty much set up with Octoprint. A big shout out to Gina Hoiske for making Octoprint as a free and open source project, and a shout out to her patrons and supporters for making that possible as well. So if you enjoy Octoprint, maybe consider supporting Gina directly too. And of course, a shout out to my patrons and YouTube members as well, who also make it possible for me to make these videos. Next supporter exclusive Q&A hangout is coming up this weekend. That's it for today. Thank you all for watching, keep on making, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.